All right, now let me make sure we on. We should be on now. On the stream. All right, yeah, so we live. So let me gird on and get us started with a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. And we thank you, dear God, for uh, this day. We thank you for uh, your blessings upon us this day. You allowed us to get up with our health and strength and our right mind. So now, Father, we come to the period in which we prepare to study your word. We ask, dear God, that as we prepare to study in your word, uh, that you would increase our appetite for more of your word, for more of your presence, and more of your power in our lives. And we thank you, Father, for all those who are on the conference line and on live, on Facebook, and be with us in the midst. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I thank God for another Wednesday night in the Word. And, uh, and so we're looking to continue in our series of Psalm 119. Let me pull up the lesson here. Or Psalm 119, uh, our eight verses of study tonight is verses 97 through 104. Psalms 119, verses 97 through 104. And I trust that you have it now. And it reads, beginning with verse 97, Mem, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Amen. And so tonight, I want to tag this text tonight as we study the benefits of holy meditation. The benefits of holy meditation. My brothers and sisters, tonight, as we prepare to get into our lesson, we need to revisit refresh ourselves on the concept of holy meditation. Now, there are several types of meditation. There are some non-holy meditations. As a matter of fact, uh, yoga use meditation, uh, but their focus of meditation is, is nothing to do with holy. And there are other uh, belief systems uh, that use meditation. But meditation, holy meditation, is 
was ascribed to all of God's people and that it should be exercised in our daily life and our daily walk with God. And so tonight, my brothers and sisters, our text tonight is under the heading of the 13th alphabet, Mim. Uh, the numeric value of Mim is 40. Mim is a symbol of an ocean or lake. And so let's let's get into the lesson. We gonna outline it in five parts tonight. Five parts. Part number one, we want to see the focus of meditation. And that's in verse 97. Part one, the focus of meditation. And that's found in verse 97. Part two, the effect of meditation. That's found in verses 98 through 100. The effect of meditation as found in verses 98 through 100. Part three, the effect of meditation is seen in daily life. And that's verses 101 and 102. The effect of meditation is seen in daily life. Verses 101 and 102. Part four, the sweetness of meditation. That's verse 103. The sweetness of meditation. My Lord. Found in verse 103. And finally, part five, uh, the, the hollowing influence of meditation. And that's seen in verse 104. The hollowing influence of meditation. And so as we get into the, to our study tonight, yeah, let's look at verse 97. And we want to see the focus of meditation. Mem, oh how love I thy law. It is my meditation all day. Now the word meditation comes from the Hebrew word siha. Siha means meditation, reflection, prayer, devotion. And tonight, my brothers and sisters, I want us to know and remember and understand for those of us who have never uh, been taught on the concept of meditation that meditation encompasses all definitions. It, en is, is, is en it encompasses meditation, reflection, prayer, and devotion. And so when we look at the text in verse 97, the psalmist declares, Oh, how love I thy law. And when we look at uh, uh, the way it is constructed, that statement, it grammatically, it ends with an explanation point. And the explanation point points to excitement. So in other words, the psalmist has reached a state of excitement about the word of God. And that's what the focus of meditation is. The psalmist says, love I thy law. So thy law is the focus of meditation. And so the focus is, my brothers and sisters, the word of God. And Joshua 1 and 8 says this, 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And so, brothers and sisters, if we want to have a good and prosperous life as we walk with God, we have to implement into our lives and into our daily walk some meditation. Because meditation will help you to reflect on uh, the unmerited favor of God in your life. And so the psalmist here makes the statement of loving thy law based upon his reflection of God's way, his word, and his testimonies in his life. And so he focuses on the word of God. And we're talking about holy meditation. So that, that, that's where our focus should be. In order for our meditation to be holy, we must meditate on the holy word of God. Uh, there are some things you can meditate on. You can meditate to try to relax. You can meditate to try and get rest. You can meditate to try and and uh, get the influence of the universe into your life, whatever that means. But as a child of God, our dependency is not upon the universe, but upon the person who created the universe, who is God. And so our meditation also should deliver us to a place that we fall in love with God's word. Because the psalmist just exclaimed to the Lord in this song, Oh, how love I thy law. Because the more you reflect, the more you meditate, the more you pray, the more you have devotion and is all focused and centered around the word of God, the more you can't help but to get excited and fall in love with God's word because it reminds you that his word is truth. It's true. And there are a lot of people believe that the Bible is a fable, a, a, a book of stories but we know, those of us who will have an intimate relationship with God, we know that these words are true. And they're still true today. Written thousands of years ago, but they still ring true today because God is, as we, we discovered last week, immutable. He don't change his, his ways. And, and his requirement is holiness. And so holy meditation will help us to focus on the aspect of our walk with him that would help us to achieve the standard that he's looking for. We got to be holy, brothers and sisters. How many times or, or, or how many of us actually do implement meditation in our lives? Uh, uh, reflect on that question. And answer it within yourself because it may be the reason why you don't feel as though you're accomplishing anything in your life. It might be why you don't feel as though uh, you're being successful in life as a child of God. But let me remind you, we just read uh, what Joshua 1 and 8 says that meditation will make you prosperous and then it would guide you into good success. And we got to understand that prosperous does not always attach itself to monetary resources. 
Everybody want to associate prosperous with money. But, but you can't put a price on good health. You can't put a price on a peace of mind. You can't put a price on a relationship with God where you have favor over your life. And all that is a prosperous life. Your family doing well. Your, your grandchildren doing well. Your family going on because more, more generations are coming into the world. All of that is encompasses prosperous. So the psalmist says that the focus of meditation is the word of God. But then as he focuses on the, med the, the word of God and falls in love with the word of God, it does the next thing that he, he, he says in his statement, it, it extends uh, your meditation. In other words, when you begin to meditate on God's word and, and reflect on the favor he has over your life and, and, and have prayer and communication with God and, and have devotion with God, the more you fall in love with his word. And guess what? The more you extend your period of meditation. The psalmist has evolved to the place where he says, it is my meditation all day. <laughs> and, and, and that says a lot because it, it shows the, that there is a growth in your life when you begin to extend your meditation. You know, some people look at meditation as an obligation and that's the wrong way to look at it because it will cause you to just do it, just to go through the motion. You'll do it, I'm, I'm going to meditate. You may meditate 10, 20 minutes, and then your mind, it starts bothering you in your mind. Oh, my show is on TV. I got to break this meditation so I can watch my favorite TV show. But brothers and sisters, when you fall in love with God's word, his word have a way of causing you to not pay attention to time. How many times have you been enjoying a word of God, a sermon or a lesson, and you lost track of time and you look up again and, and, and over an hour had been passed? That's the effect that meditation has on the child of God. It, it causes them to desire to spend more time in the presence of God meditating. So David says, I, 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 I love your word and it is my meditation all day. Let's look at part two of this outline. The effect of meditation, verses 98 through 100. Listen at what David says now. Thou, through thy commandment, has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. And so, right off the bat, when I read these three verses, it stands out to me that the effect of meditation is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the quality or state of being wise. Wisdom is having knowledge of what is true or right coupled with the ability to make a just judgment or perform a just action. Now, contrary to the beliefs of many people, wisdom have nothing to do with age because you can be older and still have no wisdom and someone younger than you can be wiser than you. And so the world have tried to portray wisdom as being a person with a head full of gray hair, but that's, that's not accurate. 
wisdom brings you to the state of being wise by making right decisions and having the ability to make just judgment or perform a just action. Which lets us know once we begin to meditate on God's word and we extend our meditation, the more we meditate, the more meditation will then fill us with wisdom. You can't get wisdom outside the word of God. You can't get wisdom and, and, and outside of holy meditation because there are many who, who profess to be wise, but they have the inability to have the right, uh, to make the right decisions, uh, when it comes to their lives, when it comes to their spiritual journey with God, their decisions and their delays in walking and talking with God points to the opposite, and that is the fact that they are lacking wisdom, because wisdom will always point you to God in holy meditation. It would always point you into doing the right things and making the right decisions in your life in holy meditation. And my brothers and sisters, you need wisdom to navigate through this, this crazy and perverse world. But not only does wisdom give you the knowledge and, uh, to make a true and right uh, decision and give you the ability to make just judgment and perform a just action, but wisdom is always accompanied by the twin concept of discernment and insight. Can I pause here for a few minutes tonight? Brothers and sisters, as a child of God, the twins are, 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 are a concept that you really need to have in your daily walk with God. You need some discernment and some insight because you got to be able to navigate around the traps of the devil, around the people that he uses. And I emphasize he uses because our warfare is not against the flesh, but it's against a spirit that influences the flesh. And so you got to be able to discern that and wisdom would point you into the right, the right thinking towards that. It would have, it would remind you by the aid of the Holy Spirit that it's not this person in front of you that's your enemy. It's the, it's the spirit that's influencing that person. And the way you handle uh, that individual the Holy Spirit can guide you in a just way, making a just action, and you can win that person to the Lord. Because, you know, they'll be wrestling with it in their minds. Well, my goodness, as bad as I treat this person or, or as, as, as disrespectful as I am to this person, this person's still full of smiles, still looking happy. I need to know what they know. And hey, then that opens up a door for a teachable moment. You know, the Lord may burden them and they may get upset behind what they're experiencing. And they need somebody to talk to and unload on. And wisdom in you would kick in. Discernment would kick in. And then insight, who is right next to discernment, would kick in. You need to have discernment and insight in your walk with God because insight, the Holy Spirit will give you the intimate details of situations that you're experiencing in life. And guess what? He going to always point you back to the focus of meditation, which is the Word of God. And if you experience difficulty in your life, and you don't reflect or turn to God's word, you're lacking insight. You're lacking discernment. 
and brothers and sisters, you can't gain insight or discernment without having a meditation, a study, and an obedience to God's word. That's how it come. That's how you grow. Is a spiritual, is a spiritual side of you, and you grow in the spirit by the spiritual nourishment, which is the word of God. You got to feed on God's word like you trying to grow. You purposely want to grow. Your appetite should steady be increasing because as you meditate, as the psalmist, as the psalmist correctly describes in chronological order, the steps, you, when you love the word, it become an all day thing. <laughs> I just got to see what the Lord have to say for my life. I, I I know I got to pause it at a point in my life when I have to go to a job and while I'm working. But guess what? I get a lunch break. <laughs> and on my lunch break, I don't necessarily have to just eat physical food, but I can eat physical food and some spiritual food, which is God's word at the same time. Because that's how that's how important it is. That's how how uh uh high the craving is for God's word. Because I got to live according to His word. All my hope, all my trust is in His word. And when trouble comes, I'll be comforted in His word because I reflect on the testimonies of God and on His word. Amen. But look at what the psalmist is saying here. The psalmist says that uh, thou through thy commandments had made me wiser than mine enemies. Now let me pause here for a few minutes and explain this because notice here the psalmist noticed uh, that wisdom had imparted into his life based upon his meditation time and he notices that his the word of God had made him wiser than those who are his haters but I want to caution you here because it's not the time to get uh, arrogant because you recognize that you are wiser than somebody else, wiser than your haters, or wiser than somebody that may be teaching you in a, a Sunday school setting, or maybe even in a Bible class setting. I remember uh, sitting in some Bible classes uh, when I was when I was uh, during my period away from Corinthian and listening to the pastor teach. And I'm sitting there in my mind saying, now that's not accurate. But I did not put him on the spot. I did not stop going to Bible class or to Sunday school because I realized that there were some inaccuracies in the word. What we got to do is press through that. And sometimes a lot of people don't have the discernment or the insight to be able to make a decision based upon what's best for your spiritual journey. Now, is it better for your spiritual journey, do you think, that if you happen to be in that situation where you, you, you notice that you know more or a little more knowledgeable in the word than the person that's teaching the class, is it, is it best in your situation to stop attending? Or is it best that you continue to attend for your spiritual walk with God? Because you got to realize God may be using that situation with that particular person to test how mature you have become in his word. To test if wisdom took root in your spirit. Yes, brothers and sisters, when you discover that you have become wiser 
in the things of God, wiser than some people placed around you and in your life, is not the time to get arrogant, but to get humble. And then when you humble yourself, it can only come through prayer, meditation, devotion, and practicing holy living. And so the effects of meditation is wisdom. And that's what the psalmist is showing us in those three verses. All right, so now let's go to part three. Now let's look at the effect of meditation is seen in daily life. Verses 101 and 102. Now check this. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments for thou has taught me. Now when you look at verse 101, let's take let's look at them one at a time. Verse 101 here, now the psalmist declares that because of the previous engagements that's mentioned ahead, mentioned prior to these verses, uh, based upon his meditation on God's word and his meditation duration and the effects of meditation and the wisdom that meditation imported in his life, now he declares that it all helped him to refrain his feet from every evil way. Here, my brothers and sisters, the psalmist here describes to us uh, that once wisdom take place in your life and based upon the strength of God's word being a part of you on a daily basis, you can have the strength to not go certain ways. And that's hard right now. And, and the reason why it's hard right now for some believers is because they're not practicing meditation enough uh, to increase it. And it's, and, it's and it's all because, as I far, I've already previously mentioned, that some of them are doing it because they just think it's an obligation. Oh, Lord, I'm tired of, I'm tired of the pastor talking about meditation and uh, let me just do this meditation so I can tell them I meditated and then you do it for a few minutes but my brothers and sisters the benefits won't take root in your life based off of a few minutes because a few minutes will not give you enough to practice in your daily walk with God this is a practice and if God's standard is holiness you got to practice holiness and the only way you can practice holiness is by putting it into action on a daily basis. And notice when the psalmist said that he was meditating and he loved God's word, he loved the word entirely. And the reference scripture that I use, Joshua 1 and 8 says that you shall not depart from the word of God, but to observe and do according to all that is written. I told y'all on Sunday that, that many believers think that they got the right to pick and choose what they want to obey in God's word. They think they can pick to obey this, but choose not to obey that, you know, but you got to obey the word in its entirety as it is written. And if that word, even if the word tell you, uh, let me use this as illustration. If the word tell you, uh, Sunday coming and from now on until I tell you different, you should be wearing all green. If that's in the word, you should do it. Why question it? Now I know that's not in the word, but I'm just trying to show you how obedience to God's word should be precedent. And here the psalmist says that I was able to refrain my feet from every evil way. 
because there go them twins again navigating you. Those twins would navigate you. You would have that spirit of discernment to know where well, hey look. It's not good to get involved with this. It's not good to be a part of that. It's not good to attend this. And then the insight will explain to you why it's not good to be a part of all those things. And you would have the strength spiritually to refrain from, from those evil ways. And many people fail to refrain from going certain direction or interacting with certain people in life who who has nothing to do with God, but because you feel like their personality is fun and bubbly, that you feel as though they are living a fun life, you set aside uh, the precepts and the standards of God for a moment of what you think is fun, and then you pick when you want to pick it back up and try to walk accordingly and you wonder why you feel empty inside spiritually. You wonder why you feel as though you're not having a successful walk with God. You wonder why it appears as if God is not answering the prayers that you are praying and it's all because you trying to pick and choose. You trying to straddle the fence. You got to decide what's more important to you because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve the world and God too. Now you can live in the world and serve God. It is possible. But you got to practice this in your daily life. So guess what? When that word starts instructing you on how to give your money and support ministry, then you should do it. You should never enter a place or a state of mind to where you hold back from what the Holy Spirit is instructing you to give just to, to try and, and keep it to yourself. Because God blesses all of us financially and otherwise that we may share with others. And so... He says that I was able to refrain from every evil way. And it's just not walking and going places, but it's also your thinking. The word of God, once it's a part of you, and those twins go to working in your life, discernment and insight, you would be able to refrain from the evil thoughts. The Bible says that we should be casting down any imagination that rises up against the word of God. And so anything that come into your mind to make you feel as though the word of God is such a hard burden or, or you shouldn't attend service this Sunday or, or you shouldn't attend Bible class, then you should be able to cast that down because it shouldn't be a part of you. It should not be a part of you because you have the Holy Ghost inside you. And the Holy Ghost has the power uh, to clear your mind and redirect your focus. But guess what? You limit in his, his involvement in your life when you're not practicing on a daily basis. And, and brothers and sisters, there are some people that's been in church a long time and believe me, they should be further along in their spiritual walk with God. They shouldn't still be at the place where they're giving hit and miss service, hit and miss financial support, hit and miss everything when they come to God. But when it comes to secular things, they got perfect attendance. Something wrong with that. And they don't see nothing wrong with it because they're void of wisdom, discernment, and insight. But then look, not only does he say I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Look at what he said. He did it 
so that he can keep God's word. He did it so he can be obedient to God's word. And that should be our motivation. That should, that should be the motivation as to why we practice holiness. Why we attend worship service. Why we give our monetary resources to the Lord's house for the sake of ministry because we want to keep his word. When you know what his word says, we sh it should be easier to keep it. But then you got to watch yourself because the more you know what God's word say, don't forget now, the enemy, the adversary, the antichrist, he's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. And he's not omnipotent. However, he's looking, trying to find a way in to influence you because he don't like the fact that you're getting more word, your attendance is getting improving, your giving is improving. So he got to try and find a way to try to distract you and, and influence you to, to go back to your old habits and start hitting and missing again. But brothers and sisters, you need to tell that devil he is a liar and that he has no power over your life. And that's why I say when you feel these strong urges to do something contrary to what God's words say, it's probably the enemy or one of his helpers that's trying to influence your thinking. And discernment would teach you or help you to recognize that fact. And insight will navigate you on the correct course of action to continue your steps with God, to continue your spiritual growth and obedience in God, that you may experience the abundant life that is promised in God's word, the prosperous life, and the good success that God's word promises you as a child of God. You should be at a place in your relationship where you get tired of a mediocre experience with God. You should be at a place at some point in your relationship with God where you want to see God manifest himself in your life like never before. And I'm telling you when, you, when your mind is focused that way and, and your thinking is on that way, and your expectation of what God will do in your life is on that level, you can't help but get excited because you're waiting to see what God's going to do next. Yes, you still got haters. Haters still going to be there. But believe me, you, if you still keep hold on to your excitement, Hold on to your praise and give God that praise, that glory, that honor. Give God that time of worship. Guess what? The enemy uh, can't affect you. The word of God says that you got something greater in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So that 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 is impossible for any outside influence to dictate your thoughts when you got that greater power in you that's greater than it, the, the outside influences. Now, caution to the wise, sometimes is not the fact uh, that we are not attending church and not attending Bible class because we can do all of those things but sometimes it's your own decision to not do certain things. Oh, oh, I feel it right now. Somebody don't like me tonight because you you picking what you don't like. Oh, I love the word of God says that we shouldn't forsake the assembling of ourselves to come together. Oh, Lord. Ties and offering. I don't like that too much. I'm going to tip him. I'm going to just give a little bit off the top. I am not going to participate in that often. 
See, but my brothers and sisters, what you're doing is you giving in to the carnal thoughts of your mind and not the spiritual thinking that wisdom, discernment, and insight will dictate in your heart. And yes, you can go to Bible class, go to church, and do everything above and still choose what you're going to be obedient to. But the correct way to, cor the, the best way to correct that behavior is to lean on discernment and lean on insight and so that discernment can tell you that that behavior is not godly and insight can direct you on the course of action to correct that behavior because it's showing up in your life that you may know what you have to address in order to improve yourself and to improve your walk with God. That's the reason why I keep manifesting in your life and a lot of people of God are steady making the same mistakes they keep failing the same test over and over because they don't recognize that these experiences keep popping up in your life because it's like a sounding an alarm that this is not right and this is how you should correct this. But when you don't listen to discernment or insight or don't have enough of it because of lack of meditation, study, prayer, devotion, God's word, lack of wisdom, then you don't know that there's a problem to be corrected. You fall into a place of self-righteousness to where you believe that your decision making when it comes to your walk with God and picking and choosing what to obey in his word is justified, but is only justified by your own thoughts, and not by the word of God. Because the word of God speaks against self-righteousness. But let's go on. Look at 102. I have not departed from thy judgments. For thou has taught me. Oh, look at what the psalmist declares. The, the psalmist declares all the time I'm spending in your word, meditating, communicating with you. I recognize the fact that I, I don't have to depart from your judgment because you my teacher. When you can humble yourself and go before the presence of God, in meditation and in prayer and in devotion, you are availing yourself to be taught by God through his word. And God's will is that you should live an abundant life, that you should have eternal life. And, and his purpose of teaching you and instructing you in his written word is to guide and direct you to that point. And if I were you, <laughs> I would want every benefit that a child of God is supposed to have in his word. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, uh, nobody uh, signs up for insurance policies and then when it's time to cash in, say, oh, that's okay, keep the money. I just was happy to have the insurance. No, nobody gonna do that. And it's the same way you should think when it comes to the word of God. Or you shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, I'm going to pick and choose because I don't need the benefits of God in my life. Uh -uh. I want every benefit that's in the word of God. If healing is in there, I'm expecting it and I want it. <laughs> I'm telling you. And so our thinking should be accordingly. We have to separate uh, the way the world has taught us through secular school on how to think towards life and then bring in uh, the spiritual thinking and spiritual awareness that's, that comes with wisdom and start applying that into our lives. 
especially as a child of God, because we're going somewhere. Oh, this world is not our, we passing through here. And, and see, and that's why the Bible instructs us not to love the world, neither the things in it, because this is not our, our final destination. But you're clinging to things and, and holding on to things, lusting after certain things because you act like you don't have nowhere to go. But you better be careful with that because God does has a way of turning you over to those thoughts. Because you keep repeating the same habit. And God does get to the place where he, he feels as though Okay, well, this, they love that that much. I'm going to just turn them over to the lust of their own desires. And that's called a reprobate. He, he'll, have you, he'll cause you to have a reprobate mind. And I know people say, oh, God is love. God loves everybody. That's true. He loves everybody, but you have to accept his love. And, and and to accept his love, you got to accept all of him. You can't pick what you're going to accept. Oh, God loves everybody, so I'm going to accept his love, but I'm still going to live a same-sex lifestyle because God loves everybody. No, my brothers and sisters, it don't work that way. You got to accept all of him. And so let's go on. It's time creeping on me. Look at the forward part. We just did part three. Meditation is seen in our daily life. And part four is the sweetness of meditation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at 103. The psalmist said, How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Explanation point. Yea, Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Explanation point. Here the psalmist, uh, he describes the word of God by describing how flavor touches the taste buds. You know how that, 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 that favorite dessert or favorite food of yours delights your taste bud? And you just enjoy that meal so much that you be wanting more of it, wanting seconds, and you 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 want thirds, and you 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 just want more of it. That's how the psalmist is describing his meditation with, with the Lord, because the meditation of God is so sweet that it delights the spiritual taste buds of your life. And it makes you desire or crave more of God's word. Because the taste to your spiritual taste buds, the word of God is sweeter than honey. <laughs> and honey is sweet. In other words, the word of God is that enjoyable that you delight yourself in sacrificing time to meditate because it's that good to you. And you're experiencing the benefits of his word. Because remember now, when I told you to think about that favorite dessert, you don't just enjoy the taste, but you're enjoying the benefits of it because it's filling you up. It's filling up your belly. And guess what the word of God does to your spirit? It fills you up. And then when times of trouble come, you're full enough to be able to handle it because you meditate daily, all day <laughs> on God's word. My Lord. And so the psalmist declares that it's sweet. Meditation is sweet. And let's go to the final verse. Part five, the hollowing influence of meditation the psalmist declares in the final verse through thy precepts I get understanding therefore I hate every false way now the word hollow means holy and remember now Jesus 
when he instructed the disciples how to pray, he told them to always say, Hallowed is thy name, because God's name is holy. And if God's precepts and standards for our lives and requirement is holy, then the hallowing influence or the holy influence of meditation will show up and manifest itself in our lives by giving us a better understanding of his word. And once we gain understanding, look at what happens to us. We begin to hate every false way. And that's how you be able to peel yourself, peel off the layers of the world that was all on top of you prior to you giving your life to God, a little at a time, you just start cutting things loose because you're practicing walking and living holy and following God's word. And the more you practice and the more you gain understanding from God's word, then you begin to see things for what they really are. It's not worth it. It's a trick of the devil. Because if the devil can get you caught up in the, the things of the world and have you lose track of time, time will run out and Christ would return and you'll still be out of fellowship. You'll still be on the other side of God, void of salvation, not having time, not having the, the, the chance to give your life to God because the devil and his distractions lured you and kept you long enough to where time ran out on you. That's one of the devil's biggest secret uh, techniques yet. One of his most secret technique is to get you to lose track of time by influencing you to make you feel as though your self-righteous decisions are good enough until you can grow and make better decisions. That's what he always do. He causes you to question God's word. Take it all the way back to your first ancestor. He questioned Eve. Did God say you shouldn't eat? from the tree and see he causes you to doubt God's word and so we got to be careful my brothers and sisters and they're closing because I don't want to overextend that I can go I can go a while with this now but in closing meditation is so important to the believer and to the child of God that it should be a part of their daily lifestyle regimen it should be your emergency kit. It should be your start off the day kit. It should be your midday kit and the close of your day kit. You should be turning to God's word as often as you can. Let me tell you, that devil ain't playing fair. You got to remember now, right now, he in control of this world. And he coming, he, he doing all out of salt on you. And many of us or many believers are just sitting there and taking the blows of the devil instead of rising and fighting back. Well, let me unmute. I thank God for the night. Thank God for his word. All participants are unmuted. All right, praise the Lord. I enjoyed the lesson, but I, I, I really, I really didn't want to stop. <laughs> but if I, if I wouldn't have stopped myself, I'd probably be here steady teaching while I'm supposed to be at work. But I had to cut it off. All right, any questions or comments? I see. <laughs> I see Sister Johnson and uh, Sister Thompson, Minister Lee, all in the comment section, been on here live on the feed in the comment section. Anybody have a question, comment about the lesson tonight?
All lines are open. I stopped myself from teaching to give you time to <laughs> to, to communicate. <laughs> so you got time. Phone lines are now open. Meditation can involve singing as well as reading. Yeah, because singing is a part of worship. Okay, that was my question. Oh, thank you for the question. But you don't tell me you sing, because I'm going to want you in the choir. <laughs> Yeah, cause that, look, that question indicates you got a voice, huh? <laughs> okay. So I, I know not to bring out any notes on <laughs> Yes, indeed. Look, only a person with a nice singing voice will ask that kind of question. <laughs> Anybody else with a question or comment? God bless y'all. Man, I just enjoy I enjoy this word, man. Look. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pray for me. Anyone else? Praise uh God. -huh. God. Do I enjoy it every Wednesday? Thank you, Praise the Lord. We, we certainly uh, appreciate you, but not not not, not remember now. You know, with all the enjoyment you're getting, don't think that rascal sleep yeah? He ain't sleep. He, he is not sleep. Anybody else got a question or comment? While the phone lines are open, I feel somebody want to say something. Great, you got the time right now. All right, bro, Pastor. I'm, I'm really thanking God for you. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. Uh, I see Virlin, Sister Hayes, Sister Virlin Hayes was on the uh, comments too. She said, I have just went through this scenario. Praise the Lord. And the Lord knows how to, how to, uh, how to reach out to you with his word. Anybody else with question or comment? Yes. Appreciate your honesty, and we appreciate your comments. And praise the Lord! Thank God. I see. Uh, while while I'm waiting for some, yes. Just don't want you just got to go back and get the something with you. Somebody say, 
but I know what's wrong. I didn't take time to do meditation. Yes, and sometimes, I think I told you this, sometimes I forget when I get in my car and I just have to go off the traveling grid. And it just looks like it, it, it takes my balance away from it because I know in that point I forgot to do something. I need traveling grace because there's a lot of stuff <laughs> going on out there when you behind the wheel. Yes, Lord. So that's a part of meditation too. Ask God to guide you. Okay. See what is it he wants you to do and protect you during your day. Yes, Lord. So that's a part of meditation. Yeah. Hey man, thank you for your comments, Sister He. That's that's all true. That's true. That is very true. I see. Uh, let me read a couple of comments while I'm waiting. I see Sister Johnson say, "Continue to attend." Yes, Lord. And uh, I see uh, Minister Lee say, "Fill up this empty vessel." <laughs> Lord, Lord, Sister Thompson said, yes, all right, amen. I'm well, seeing the engagement in the comment section on the live feed. I thank God for every comment and every conversation and, and uh, statements and uh, made on the uh, on the conference line. But now, you know, remember now, really and truly, you got to focus. You got it's a sacrifice to meditate. But once you determine in your mind when you go meditate, stick to that. And don't let nothing interrupt it because I remember <laughs> when I used to see I was gonna meditate at a certain time and I wouldn't want to watch what I wanted to watch on TV. I used to have to rush it. I used to rush my meditation. And that's why I can speak to that like that because I'm somebody that used to do it. So I, I know how it is. <laughs> well, I used to hurry up and get up, get off my meditation just to go turn that TV on. Because for some reason it, it feel like you're missing something when you got to tear yourself away from TV. But I don't have that problem no more. I can tell you that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else with question, comment, testimony? All right. All right. So don't, look, tonight, don't forget uh, to send your uh, Bible class offering to our ZLP or our Givelify. And, uh, hmm? Somebody saying something? All right. And, uh, be prayerful Sunday. Sunday is our ministry day. Invite somebody to come and, and, and celebrate with us our ministry. Invite somebody to come. Invite a family member. That, or invite, bring somebody who can't bring themselves. Because we want to have a good time in the Lord Sunday. Celebrating the ministry. Because without ministry, we wouldn't be where we are as a, as a, a body of Christ. Ministry is important. And we, we we want you to come praying that more would be involved with ministry. <laughs> All right. So if there's nothing else, any anybody want to make any announcements or anything before I end the feed? I was good. I was happy to hear that Brother Richardson is doing good now. And so that's all a blessing. And so I, I spoke with Reverend Franklin on the other night. Reverend Franklin doing good too. And so uh, today is Wednesday. Oh my! Uh, he had a procedure done today. And so uh, I, I trust everything went well. Because I think I sound like I heard him, heard his voice tonight on the uh, conference call. But anyway, if no one else have any questions, comments, I bid you all good night. Good night, y'all. Be blessed. Blessings. Blessings.